How's it going everyone? Got another book review for you. Today we are going through Astral Dynamics by Robert Bruce. There we go, got a nice little thumbnail there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, is this the best book on astral projection and out-of-body experience that has ever been written? I don't know. It's definitely one of the best ones that I've ever read, but I will say that it, it actually kind of complicated things a little bit for me. Um, it made me second guess my technique that had been working just fine um, and then made it to where I started trying another technique and couldn't do it and it also kind of caused problems for my other technique as well. But when I was able to reconcile those differences, I was able to get out much further and I was able to stay out for much longer. So that's a topic in and of itself. I've noticed that the more I prep beforehand, the longer I spend meditating, the longer I spend getting into trance, uh, the longer that I spend on letting go. I've noticed that has a direct relation to how long I'm able to stay out or how far I'm able to go <clears throat> before I'm shocked back or before I run out of power, so to speak, my battery empties. Let's start where we typically do with the table of contents. So part one covers elements of projection. Part two covers new energy ways. Part three covers core skills. Part four is projection exit and technique. Part five is the Akashic connection. And part six is strange astral phenomena. So we get into dimensional theory, the projectable double, the incredible mind split, complications of consciousness, astral sight, waking paralysis, OBE, and perception. That's out-of-body experiences. And then we get into imagination versus visualization. We get into, which is, which is a, a good one. We get into mobile body awareness, tactile imagining, or tactile imaging rather, supporting energy structures, energy body stimulation, raising energy, stimulating primary energy centers, and so on and so on. Preparations for projection, all of this stuff. Now, yeah, this is, this is a sizable work. Um, <laughs> if most of you could summon the concentration to make it through this book, you could probably use that for your scrying and projections. <laughs> now, the first part is dimensional theory, and it begins, the holy grail for projectors and OBE researches is a reliable key to planned and repeatable out-of-body experiences. I have spent a significant part of my life on this quest, studying the mechanics and dynamics of OBE from both inside and outside my body. Then we get into non-physical dimensions, dimensional theory, things like that. Then there is a section on the process of etheric body connection, which might be just what you need to hear. It covers the real-time body, gives you some sort of idea of what to expect, like melting hands, growing hands, branching hands, things like that. Um, getting into astral reflection, the astral body proper, um, seeing children, animals, and other projectors, things like that. Then it gets into the what's known as the separation point. And this says here that the mind split experience as given above and the mini controlled experience I have done similar to this indicate that when projected when the projected double leaves the physical body, it takes with it a full copy of all memories up to the exact moment of the mind split, which is basically, that deals with my experience as well. From that moment onward, the projected double records its own memories completely separately. And then we get into what he calls shadow memory and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> Then there is a section that some people could probably benefit from, which is ways to break paralysis. Because so many people have expressed trouble with sleep paralysis and, and 
sleep paralysis demons, I'm going to be honest, most of you talking about sleep paralysis demons I probably need to spend less time on Reddit. Um, but I understand that it is as an actual phenomenon. I have had an experience and that was enough. <laughs> Moving on. <clears throat> I will briefly read this section on ways to break paralysis in regard to um, out-of-body experience and such. <clears throat> Learning and practicing conscious exit projection reduces the frequency of paralysis episodes. Projection attempts encourage the energetic development of the projection mechanism within the etheric body. If a projection is unacceptable due to fear of OBE, short daytime projection attempts are advised. Energetic development work, like meditation and energy work, as well as developing other core skills, will also help resolve projection-related energetic and mind-split conflicts. Very good. Which are the underlying causes of waking paralysis? Many people advocate giving in to waking paralysis and attempting to convert it into an OBE. I would advise doing this only if vibrations or other projection symptoms are present. Otherwise, it seems, point, it seems a pointless exercise. If paralysis is frequent, this would definitely be worth a shot at least once. If the conversion continually fails and no reliable way is found to stop paralysis episodes, a progressive course of energetic development and meditation becomes the most viable option. The simplest and most direct approach, the one most people prefer, is to clear the mind, refuse to fear, and concentrate on moving a single big toe. For some reason, the big toe is the easiest body part to reanimate during waking paralysis episode. Once a big toe moves, even slightly, waking paralysis will end. To increase the effectiveness of the above technique, I also recommend using the brushing awareness action, see chapter 12, on the big toe to break paralysis. This helps strengthening body awareness there, making it easier to force movement. It goes on to say a little bit more, but for most of you that will suffice. Oh, here's also an, an interesting section I'll read as well. Food can also play a part with waking paralysis. An empty stomach tends to increase energetic activity within the etheric body, thereby increasing the likelihood of waking paralysis and spontaneous projection episodes. Uh-huh. <laughs> as someone who is constantly on what's known as GI rest, um, which is intermittent fasting, essentially, um, projection is much, much more common, um, especially spontaneous projection when you've had a lack of, a lack of food to eat. Okay. A heavy meal can make projection more difficult as it, is, as it significantly slows energetic activity in the etheric body and promotes sleep. Then it gets into unwanted projection symptoms, subjective real time perceptions, mobile body awareness, then there is a section on tac using tactile imagining, which is very much related to proprioception. We have um, awareness of hands, splitting awareness, visibly detecting awareness hands, um, which awareness hands are is one of the techniques that you'll find in this book. Then we get into a chapter which is chapter 13, which is about raising energy. Um, and just before that, there's also some different etheric techniques, which is um, very, very useful for proprioception and projecting your double, so to speak. Then there is a very interesting thought control example, which I will start off by showing you the, the, the graph, the chart. Um, because it'll make it easier to understand what the last parts are about. So this right here, hopefully that's not backward for you guys. <laughs> for you guys and gals and everyone else. All right, so this is the thought control example. You have a surface thought, right, I better get the cat a new flea collar. Then after that is, right, I better get the cat a new f Becomes, right, I better get the cat. Right, I better get. 
Right, I bet. Right. R. Then it's question marks. Nearly got it. Then, at the point where you're not necessarily thinking it, but you're having the impulse of, of the thought, it says, this is the pressure of a thought about to start. Almost there is not even really a perception. It's just there, an awareness or lessening thought pressure. Then there's hardly any thought pressure. And then there's no thought pressure at all. A clear surface mind. Then we get into the deeper mind. We get into the trance state in general in chapter 17. We get into the different levels of trance. We get into trance requirements like deep physical relaxation, clearing the surface mind, using mental techniques to speed up the time that it takes you to enter the trance state. Um, then we get into like the elevator technique, the ladder technique, steps, uh, climbing down a rope, the feather technique, smoke rings, personalized trance techniques like trance litany. Then there's common trance problems, falling asleep during, during trance, inability to enter trance. Um, yeah, good stuff. Then we get into actual projection techniques about halfway through the book um, because like I could tell you how to project, but if you've never done the things that I'm talking about, you won't know how to actually do it. <laughs> like I can say, okay, now associate with your etheric energy. And some people be like, what the fuck does that even mean? Well, practice proprioception. Projection technique. Um, then we get into disorientation and subtle body malignment, which is pretty important for a lot of you. Then we have real life astral regions and voids, um, tube type structures, um, entrance structures, ways to navigate, ways to create your own structures. Then there are actual, um, there's some actual stories in here of, of, I believe, Robert Bruce and perhaps some of their other clientele or students that have shared as well. And then there is a glossary in the back because there are a lot of techniques that will be new to a lot of people here. But overall, I do recommend this book um, if you are actually interested in astral projection, it's going to take a lot more than what most people what most people are prepared to to give. Um, and part of that is because who or whatever set up this matrix like simulation that we appear to be in, they seem to have set the flow for consciousness to be at an almost opposite direction to the flow of reality, we'll say. So the second that you begin to turn all of those senses inward, as soon as you stop doing the things that waking daily life requires of you, and especially the things that the common world will demand of you, uh, those, you know, those are typically things that pull your focus outward instead of drawing it inward. So, <clears throat> yes, if you actually have the patience and the concentration to get through this, then I think you definitely have what it takes to utilize the lessons in there and actually astral project. Now, do you need to read this book to be able to astral project? No, absolutely not. I mean, some of you might just see this image right here and remember that. Oh, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns below. And have a good rest of the day or afternoon or evening, whatever time it is there. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks.